the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka marks a significant milestone with the opening of the Sobadanavi 350 megawatt combined cycle power plant at Keravalapitiya. The Ministry of Agriculture decides to grant a fertilizer subsidy of 4000 rupees to support rubber cultivation across Sri Lanka, aiming to boost the country's latex yield. For the fifth consecutive day, the stock exchange experiences losses with no signs of recovery over the past few days. Swiss companies and consumers can now make ultra-fast electronic payments that allow correct transfers within 10 seconds, catching up with other European financial centers. From Studio 24, here's Anuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Marking a significant milestone in Sri Lanka's energy future, the open cycle phase of the Subadhanapi 350 megawatt combined cycle power plant at Kervalapitiya was declared open by President Rale Vikramasinghe today morning. The Subadhanapi combined cycle power plant is the Sri Lanka's first power plant to be operated on liquefied natural gas as a primary fuel. Recently, a memorandum of understanding was also signed to develop infrastructure for storage regasification and supply of liquefied natural gas for the Subadhanavi combined cycle power plant. The agreement was finalized between Sri Lanka's LTL Holdings Limited and India's Petronet LNG Limited. The agreement was inked by Minister of Power and Energy Kanchan Vijay Sekar and Deputy High Commissioner of India in Sri Lanka Dr. Satyanjal Pandey. The 350 megawatt LNG based combined cycle power plant Subadhanavi is a landmark project poised to become the largest independent power producer in Sri Lanka and the first to operate with liquefied natural gas. Addressing the opening ceremony, the president acknowledged the efforts of LTL Holdings and highlighted the importance of renewable energy sources. I must commend LTL for this plant. I mean, they've been putting up so many power plants in the country; it's difficult to keep tab of it. Only the investors have invested. Know what's happening? <clears throat> But I am happy to see LTL at this stage. I remember when LTL started off for transformers. and all the difficulty we had of pushing ltl to go off on its own but you have performed you have achieved congratulations this is only the latest of what you've done and i have no doubt that you will as i discussed with you plan for more both here in sri lanka for our need and also to in other places renewable energy is the need we all have to meet the climate change deadline 2050 therefore we have to perform and the more you specialize in renewable energy the better the chances of going out both in this continent and the african continent your plant here which is 350 megawatts the sovadanavi is one of the needed power stations for sri lanka The Ministry of Agriculture has decided to grant a fertilizer subsidy of 4000 rupees to support rubber cultivation across Sri Lanka aiming to boost the country's latex yield which has seen a significant decline in the recent years. The Agricultural Ministry confirmed that the subsidy will be available starting this week in response to concerns raised by Sri Lankan Rubber Research Institute that the rubber cultivation has been hindered due to the lack of fertilizer application over the years resulting in a drop in annual latex production from 100,000 metric tons to 65,000 metric tons. To address this issue, Minister of Agriculture and Plantation Industries Minister Mahinda Maravira has instructed the ministry officials to introduce a price reduction on a 50 kg bag of fertilizer for rubber cultivation. Accordingly the price of a 50 kg bag of fertilizer will be reduced from 9500 rupees to 5500 rupees. This substantial reduction is expected to alleviate financial pressures on rubber growers and support the revival of the industry. The subsidy and price reduction are a part of a wide effort to boost the agricultural sector's resilience and productivity. The ministry is also exploring additional measures to further support rubber farmers and address any remaining barriers to effective cultivation. Minister Bandarung Gunawardena said that the country is expecting 1363 million US dollars under an international monetary fund program which is also backed by the Asian Development Bank in 2025. At a post cabinet briefing yesterday he stated that from the international monetary fund 663 million dollars is expected and typically there are two reviews in each year under the program. He added that another 400 million dollars is expected from the World Bank for the budget in 2025 and 300 million dollars from the Asian Development Bank. In addition, debt relief of 3655 million US dollars is expected. 
Minister Gunavardhan stated that this adds up to fill an external resource gap calculated as 5018 million US dollars. Sri Lanka however is also expected to collect foreign reserves under the IMF deal. Meanwhile today the president stated that the Sri Lankan government and the International Monetary Fund have reached an agreement to amend the pay as you earn tax. Speaking at a presidential election rally in Haliakuda, he stated that the proposals from both parties are to be considered and the exact amounts will be notified soon. Power and Energy Minister Kanchana Vijayasekhar said that there will be owed 656 billion rupees of debt taken over by Sri Lanka's central government to be offset by taxes on fuel by the beginning of 2025. Posting on X, he mentioned that the Treasury took over 1,200 billion rupees of debt in 2022 and a 25 rupee tax was imposed on fuel and the tax was later increased to 50 rupees in 2023. Vijayasekhar stated that at the end of it, it is estimated that 656 billion rupees will remain to be offset by taxes. Moreover, he added that at this rate, it would take another four years to offset the debt. The tax, however, is imposed on all operators. The CPC ended up with the large volumes of debt partly due to forex shortages caused by flexible inflation targeting, which involved cutting rates with inflationary open market operations while claiming that the historical 12-month inflation index was below 5% despite having a peg. The Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority's Tourism Planning, Development and Investor Relations Director, Dr. Prasad Jayasuri, stated that they want to develop Kochaveli as a beach resort, as a step to boost tourism and investment. The Sri Lankan Tourism Development Authority owns 510 acres of land in Kochaveli, out of which 160 acres have been identified by 10 investors who anticipate to begin operations within the next two to three years. Moreover, they have already done the master plan for the resort development, including the surroundings and proposed activities. He pointed out that they have identified 10 investors for these 160 acres, out of which 6 have already entered into the lease agreements with the SLTDA. According to the SLTDA, currently only one hotel, the Uga Jungle Beach, is in operation. Moreover, out of these 6 lease properties, 4 of the projects are in the approval process through the Investor Relations Unit of the SLTDA, as the projects need approval from a plethora of agencies. Unfortunately, it takes longer than what SLTD expects, which is within the year with so many agencies involved. Dr. Jayasuriya stated that hopefully, once the projects get started, they are anticipating that at least four or five projects other than Uga Jungle Beach to be in operation within the next two to three years. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. For the fifth consecutive day, the stock exchange has experienced losses with no signs of recovery over the past few days. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index record declines at today's market close. To provide a summary of today's market performance, let's turn to Netmi Fernando from First Capital Holdings. Thank you, Sanvi. The Colombo stock market landed on a negative territory for the eighth consecutive session with the ASPI falling over the 10,000 psychological level, recording at 10,946, losing 148 points, as investors yearn for further clarity on the market sentiment. Selected banks and blue chip companies exerted negative pressure on the index during the day. Turnover was recorded at LKR 732.5 million, 9.1% lower than the monthly average of 805.6 million. Ceylon Tobacco Company contributed positively to the turnover, recording LKR 127.8 million, registering 17% of the total turnover. Commercial Bank displayed revitalized interest as the shares from the rights uh, issue uh, was converted into ordinary tradable uh, shares during the day. Moreover, food, beverage and tobacco sector contributed 38% of the overall turnover, whilst capital goods and diversified financial sectors jointly contributed 28%. Foreign investors remained net buyers, recording a net inflow of LKR 49.9 million with low participation. 
The weekly bill auction conducted by the central bank was hosted today, offering fresh insights into the dynamics of the financial market. To understand the results of this auction and assess the potential impact on the secondary market, we will now connect with Tarusha Ashoggar from First Capital Holdings. In today's treasury bill auction, we saw the weighted average yields continue their upward trend for the fourth consecutive week. Both the three-month and six-month treasury bills experienced increases, while the one-year bill held steady at its previous rate. So the Central Bank of Sri Lanka offered LCAR 100 billion at the auction held today and accepted the entire amount. Notably, 53% of the accepted bids were for the three-month treasury bill. So the three-month bill saw a notable rise of seven basis points, reaching 9.49%, while the six-month bill increased by four basis points to close at 9.84%, whereas the one-year bill remained unchanged at 10.01%. So notably, the three-month and six-month bills were oversubscribed, reflecting strong demand, whereas the one-year bill was undersubscribed, with only LCA 3 billion accepted. So this sentiment was also reflected in the secondary market today, where we saw observed uh, some selling pressure leading to an increase in yields, particularly for short to mid-term securities. And this momentum aligns with the trends seen in the Treasury bill auction, where rising yields were noted across short duration. For this week ending 30th August, CBSA has LCAR 96 billion worth maturities to settle bills, while LCAR 100 billion has been raised from from primary auction during the week. Gold prices slipped today as the dollar ticked up, with investors awaiting a key US inflation report due this week for more clarity on the potential size of a September interest rate cut. The dollar's modest gain exerted pressure on gold prices, which are typically inversely related to the strength of the dollar. Spot gold fell 0.6% to $2,509.75 per ounce, and this decline follows a record high of $2,531.60 reached on the 20th of August, reflecting a period of volatility in the precious metals market. The record high underscored gold's role as a safe haven asset amid economic uncertainties and fluctuations in global financial markets. U.S. gold futures fell 0.4% to $2,543.20, influenced by factors such as interest rates, inflation expectations and geopolitical events. Oil prices rose in Asian trade today, buoyed by industry data pointing to another outsized draw in U.S. inventories, while tensions in the Middle East and supply disruptions in Libya also offered support. Brent oil futures expiring in October rose 0.5% to $79.92 a barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures rose 0.5% to $75.92 a barrel. Crude prices were hit with losses in the prior session amid some profit-taking after a strong rebound over the past week. Lingering concerns over an economic slowdown also weighed. Data from the American Petroleum Institute showed U.S. oil inventories saw a draw of 3.4 million barrels in the week to August 23rd. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated slightly against the US dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today, compared to yesterday. According to the People's Bank, the buying rate of the US dollar has decreased from 295 rupees and 17 cents to 295 rupees and 03 cents. And the selling rate has decreased from rupees 305 and 77 cents to rupees 305 and 61 cents. Now we'll look at the other currency rates. A short commercial break now. Corporate updates right after this. This is a nightly business report.
Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Celebrating over 20 years of empowering Sri Lankan youth, edX, an education exhibition and careers fair, is set to host its mid-year expo from the 6th to the 8th of September at the Bandar Naika Memorial International Conference Hall. Building on the success of the main edX expo held earlier this year, the Media Expo continues to offer a wealth of opportunities for aspiring students and job seekers. This year's event will feature over 150 education stalls and around 25 job fair stalls, including prominent tertiary education, vocational training and skills development institutes, along with leading corporate entities. Attendees will have access to a diverse range of options in higher education, training, employment and entrepreneurship. The Expo will showcase a variety of higher education institutions with both local and international, with representation from countries like Australia. Australia, Japan, Canada, Malaysia and Germany. The edX Media Expo 2024 has received strong endorsements from key government bodies, including the Prime Minister's Office and the Ministries of Education, Higher Education, Sports and Youth Affairs, Labour and Foreign Employment and Environment. Strategic partners like the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce and the Employers' Federation of Ceylon further highlight the event's significance to industry chambers and employers alike. As usual, the Media Expo will also host a job fair with top Sri Lankan companies offering on-site interviews and immediate recruitment opportunities. Prime Group, among the leading real estate developers in Sri Lanka, has celebrated the groundbreaking of its highly anticipated YOLO project. It marked as the biggest and the most luxurious first modern home apartment city in Kiribati Kota. The foundation stone laying ceremony heralded the official commencement of construction for the unique living experience set to redefine Colombo's urban skyline and the beginning of an exciting journey creating new standards for a vibrant and exclusive community. The construction of the YOLO project will be carried out ensuring the highest standards of quality and reliability throughout the building process. The event was attended by Prime Group's chairman and co-chairperson along with distinguished guests and proud future homeowners. Owners. Located in Kiribatgoda, YOLO is set amidst 13 acres, comprising 476 exquisite residences, with many firsts including a stunning infinity pool, a premier bowling alley, a first in residential apartments, a cinema providing an outdoor theatre concept, a vibrant coffee workspace, an elevated lounge featuring a cosy fire pit, lush gardens and courtyards, a karaoke bar, a gym and CrossFit centre, a single bounce pedal court, coin-operated laundry and a mini-mart among other unique amenities. Potential homeowners and investors interested in being part of this exceptional project are invited to visit the sales gallery at YOLO to reserve their spot. Canon, in collaboration with Metropolitan, proudly opened its newest Canon Image Square flagship showroom, located on the first floor of Liberty Plaza in Colombo 3. This significant milestone marks a new chapter in Canon's journey in Sri Lanka and coincides with the 50th anniversary of the enduring partnership between Canon and Metropolitan. This collaboration between Canon and Metropolitan has consistently delivered innovation, quality and excellence to the Sri Lankan market. Canon Image Square is more than just a retail store. It is a creative hub where photography, cinematography and vlogging enthusiasts, both amateur and professional, can immerse themselves into the Canon's world-class imaging technology. Situated in the heart of Colombo, at the iconic Liberty Plaza, the showroom offers a convenient and accessible location for all visual storytellers. Open from Monday to Saturday throughout the week, Canon Image Square provides a unique space where customers can explore, experiment and experience the latest in Canon's cutting-edge technology. The showroom is designed to be a center of inspiration and learning. Here, the customers can engage with Canon's full range of cameras, lenses and accessories whether photography, filmmaking or vlogging. Expert advice is readily available and the interactive demonstrations allow customers to fully experience the capabilities of Canon's products. Let's take a short commercial break. Global updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks retreated today with technology-heavy indexes falling in anticipation of earnings from market-daring Nvidia. 
while Australian stocks sank on a sticky inflation print. Persistent concerns over China also kept sentiment towards Asia on edge after Canada said it will impose steep trade tariffs on the region's biggest economy. South Korea's Kospi fell 0.5%, while Japan's Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang Seng indexes lost about 0.3% and 0.8% respectively. Focus will be squarely on whether Nevada continues to benefit from strong demand for artificial intelligence, a trend that saw the stock surge nearly 160% in value so far in 2024. U.S. stocks eked out gains ahead of a much-anticipated quarterly report from AI chip leader NVIDIA, while other mega-cap stocks ended mixed with Alphabet, Amazon and Tesla losing ground. U.S. stocks eked out gains on Tuesday ahead of a much-anticipated quarterly report from AI chip leader NVIDIA. The Dow nudged up to notch another record-high close, while the S&P 500 and Nasdaq both rose marginally. NVIDIA was the most traded company on U.S. stock exchanges on Tuesday, according to LSEG data. Shares of the AI darling climbed another 1.5 percent, marking a nearly 160 percent rise in 2024. Overall, megacap stocks ended mixed, with Alphabet, Amazon and Tesla losing ground. Among other movers, Super microcomputer dropped more than 2.5 percent after short seller Hindenburg Research said it had a short position in the AI server maker. And shares of Paramount Global slid more than 7 percent after Edgar Bronfman Jr. abandoned his bid for the company, clearing the way for Skydance Media to take control of Sherry Redstone's media empire. Data on Tuesday showed U.S. consumer confidence rose to a six-month high in August, despite some jitters about the unemployment rate, which jumped to a near three-year high of 4.3 percent last month. Swiss companies and consumers can now make ultra-fast electronic payments that allow credit transfers within 10 seconds, catching up with other European financial centres where electronic payments have been around since 2017. Switzerland is finally catching up with other European countries when it comes to electronic payments. Swiss companies and consumers are now able to make ultra-fast electronic payments that allow credit transfers within 10 seconds instead of waiting days for a transaction to clear. Electronic payments have been around in Europe since 2017 and in the US since last year. AI is a key feature that powers the development of such payments. But the Swiss have been quite attached to their physical money. According to a Swiss National Bank survey earlier this year, cash remains the most accepted method of payment by companies with physical points of sale. That's despite the rise of mobile payment apps. The SNB reported that around 60 financial institutions are now able to receive and process instant payments. That covers more than 95% of Swiss retail transactions. They also predicted that all financial institutions in Switzerland will be on board by the end of 2026. The SNB report stated, This market launch represents a further important milestone and reflects the collective stakeholder commitment to the future of cashless payments in Switzerland. According to the European Central Bank, the use of instant payments in Europe has risen from 5.2% of all credit transfers in October 2019 to 17.8% in February this year. With that, we mark the end of tonight's bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the business globe. Until then, I am Sonia Mudal Naika. Thank you for watching and have a good night.